Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and I am back with another video in my Oh So Inspired series. I hope you'll stick around, see what inspired today's cards, and see how I made them. I want to say a great big welcome back to my subscribers and regular viewers. And if this is your first time on my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. I'm so excited to be back today with another video for my Oh So Inspired series. If you saw last week's video, you know that I am taking one piece that I find online and creating something that is inspired by it. I will have that first video and the playlist linked in the description box below if you want to check that out once you're done here. Today I'm going to be making six cards that were inspired by a vellum card that I saw Rachel Tessman create on her YouTube channel. I will pop a picture of her cards on the screen now. And I will have her video linked in the description box below. For my card today, I am taking that vellum outer card and then that inner card that flips up inside. The main products that I'll be using today are in front of me here. My sentiments will come from this Clear Recollection stamp set. I will be embossing that with gold embossing powder and stamping those in Versamark. For my vellum cards, I got out three pieces of 36 pound vellum. This is a nice heavy weight that does make a good card base. For my pattern paper, I'll be using this floral piece, and if you look closely, you can see there are little metallic gold dots on there, so that's where my inspiration to heat emboss with the gold embossing powder came from. This paper came from the Die Cuts with the View Wild Flourish stack. Once I get started on the process, I will go to a voiceover. So make sure if I leave you with any questions that you leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Like with most of my projects, I'm gonna start with the cutting. I will cut three strips from the pattern paper that are three inches wide. So technically, you could make even more cards from this one piece of pattern paper. Once those three strips are cut, I then rotate my paper and cut each strip into two pieces that are four and a quarter inches wide. So that means I will yield six pieces from this pattern paper that are three inches wide by four and a quarter inches tall. Next, I got out my three pieces of 36 pound vellum and I just cut these in half and then later they will be folded in half. If you want to check out this vellum to find out information about it, including the brand name, I do have it linked in the description box below. I also have links to other lighter weight vellums if you wanted to check those out for different uses. And finally, I got out three pieces of lighter weight white cardstock. These will end up being the inner cards inside the vellum card. I'm going to cut until I get nine strips that are three and a quarter inches wide. And then once I have those, I double these up and cut them at nine inches tall. That way, when I fold them down for the final card, they're three and a quarter inches wide by four and a half inches tall. Now you are going to have some 11 inch strips left over if you cut this way. Hang on to those for later to stamp sentiments or just use for scratch pieces of paper. They'll come in really handy. Next I pulled out my score it board. This is an oldie but a goodie. I'm going to use this to score my vellum pieces in half. That way when I go to fold these, 
I won't have any cracking on the edge. Now you don't have to have a score board for this. You can use any kind of scoring tool you might already have, or you can go ahead and fold it. Just do it gently and try not to get that cracking on the edges. What I like about this is you center it from left to right in the measurements. So I put the left right around four and a quarter inches, but if I notice that the right is not on four and a quarter, I can kind of wiggle it back and forth so I know that I'm right in the center of this piece of paper, just in case it's not cut exactly to eight and a half inches. Since I had the score it board out anyway, I decided to go ahead and score my inner cards and I'm lining these up around the four and a half inch mark. Normally I would just fold these in half by hand, but I figured it was out, I would go ahead and get a nice clean fold. Now it's time to stamp my sediments. I got out my embossing buddy so my embossing powder doesn't stick to where I don't want it to, and I pulled out my Misty. For something like this where you're stamping onto vellum, it's a good idea to use a stamp positioner, especially if you're not using an ink like stays on. You do not want that stamp wiggling at all, or when you go to put on your embossing powder, it's going to be kind of shadowy, or not a nice crisp image. For the first two cards, I chose the So Grateful For You sentiment, and I just tried to center that left to right, and I placed it toward the top of the card. Once I have my stamp in place, I'm gonna pick it up with the Misty Door, and that's when I come in with my embossing buddy. Now I'm gonna ink up that sentiment, get it nice and juicy so that when I pour the powder on here in just a little bit, it has something to stick to. I tap off the excess into my tidy tray, and if you ever have any little bits that are just sticking around, you can just wipe those off with your finger or a brush. Now what I'm gonna do is bring in my heat gun. With the vellum, you wanna make sure that you do get it hot away from the vellum. So I usually have it on for 20 to 30 seconds, and then I bring it to the underneath side of what I'm embossing, and when it starts to turn gold, I bring my heat gun to the top. This way I'm not putting too much heat on one side of the vellum. I find that this usually works very nicely. I stamped and embossed two with that first sentiment, and now I'm gonna clean up my stamp and change it out. For the next two cards, I chose the Many Thanks sentiment, and I'm gonna do the same thing where I stamp it, put the powder on, and then bring out my heat gun. While I work on this part, it's a good time to tell you how you can join me in being inspired. If today's inspiration piece, so the vellum overlay cards by Rachel Tessman of Stamp Your Art Out, have inspired you, I would love to see what you create. If you play along here on YouTube, please make sure somewhere in your description box to include the hashtag, hashtag I was oh so inspired. That way I can do a search here on YouTube and find your video. If you're an Instagrammer, I would love for you to use that same hashtag, hashtag I was oh so inspired. And then please also tag me on your photo. On Instagram, I am at callmecraftyal. Now, if you don't do YouTube or Instagram, but you do have a blog and you make a post about it, I would love for you to link back to this video and then come here and leave me a link so I can go see your blog post and leave you some love. I think this is a fun way for all of us to get crafty during this time, take our minds off the virus and having to stay home away from our friends and our extended family and get creative. Once I had two vellum fronts with the many thanks sentiment on it, I then changed out my stamp and the last two cards got merci beaucoup. Here's a look at the three different sentiments. Now that all of the parts of it were done, it's time to start getting these put together. The first thing I do is add adhesive to the back of the pattern paper pieces, and this gets placed centered on the inside card. 
The inner card then gets some adhesive of its own and it gets adhered centered on the inside of the card. I just like the way that the front opens one way and then the inner card opens the other. And just being able to see that little part of the pattern paper from the front adds some more texture and dimension. And I continue this same process until all the cards are put together and then it's time to add some embellishments. So I pulled out some enamel dots I have. I chose a yellow and a green to go with the paper on the inside since there was already a lot of pink. And then I placed three on the front of each card. I placed a single enamel dot in the top corner and then I placed two more in the bottom opposite corner making sure to include one of each color. For the next Merci Boku card, I started with green in the upper corner and then put a yellow and another green in the bottom opposite corner. This creates a visual triangle and anytime you add embellishments, you should try to add them in odd numbers because it's more pleasing to the eye. I continue to do this for all of the cards until I had them all embellished and here is a close up look. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made my cards today. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.